I wasn't gonna do a video today, but then PewDiePie did an oopsie! Viva Fry, you probably all know who I am, but if you don't, go check out one of my previous videos for the introduction. I'm going to skip it this time. So I was reading the news this morning, and it turns out that PewDiePie apparently did an oopsie by pledging to donate $50,000 to the ADL in his 100 million subscriber special video. Okay, for those of you who don't know what's going on, PewDiePie, everyone knows who PewDiePie is. He is the largest individual content creator on YouTube. He just surpassed 100 million subscribers. And although T-Series, the Indian-based music and Bollywood-based channel, reached 100 million some time ago and is now nearly at 110 million subscribers, they are not an individual content creator, they are a corporation. So people distinguish their success from the success of a lone Swedish YouTuber who has amassed 100 million subscribers. All right, so here's the controversy in a nutshell. PewDiePie recently reached 100 million subscribers, he got his 100 million subscriber trophy from YouTube, and decided to make a special 100 million subscriber video. Part of the controversy is that during this 100 million subscriber video special, PewDiePie ran an ad. It was basically partly a sponsored ad for I forget what for, but it was a sponsored ad, and this irked some people who felt that it was sort of exploitive to turn his 100 million subscriber special video into a paid promotion. And while it is very easy to understand this sentiment, I was brought up with the philosophy that there is a difference between selling out and cashing in. Selling out is compromising your morals and ethics in order to succeed, whereas cashing in is basically just exploiting your success to its full capacity. So personally, I don't find it shocking or offensive that PewDiePie should monetize this monumental milestone. This milestone has monetary value and he is within his rights to exploit it to its full potential. I would consider this to be more tantamount to cashing in than selling out. Now, where it becomes more controversial is in the second part of this controversy, where PewDiePie in the same video pledged to donate $50,000 to the ADL. But as an additional celebration, I'm donating $50,000 to Anti-Defamation League which is an organization that fights bigotry and prejudice in all its forms. And for those of you who don't know what the ADL is, it is the Anti-Defamation League. Now I am pulling this from Wikipedia, knowing how a lot of people feel about Wikipedia and its objectivity, but whatever, done is better than perfect, so let's just read up on who the ADL is. The Anti-Defamation League, ADL, formerly known as the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith, is an international Jewish non-governmental organization based in the United States. The ADL states that its mission is to, quote, fight anti-Semitism and all forms of bigotry, defend democratic ideals, and defend civil rights for all, doing so through information, education, legislation, and advocacy. Now, despite that ostensibly noble mission, the ADL is not without controversy. The ADL has faced criticism for its support for Israel, charges of defamation, spying allegations, its former stance on the Armenian genocide, and possible conflation of opposition to Israel with anti-Semitism. And I'm not getting into any of that because it's complicated, it's a huge issue, you can go do your own research if you want to, and it's also not the purpose of this vlog. Suffice to say only this, the ADL has had its controversies, and the ADL is not necessarily known with advocating for the freest of free speech. Last year, the ADL took a rather harsh stance against Gab.ai, which is sort of like the uncensored version of Twitter, in which they stated as follows. Gab allows for unrestricted hateful rhetoric without consequences. That is attracting users who hold extremist views. At or Segal on where extremists are spreading their hateful views. And so here you can see the classic push and pull between the stated objective of fighting all forms of discrimination and freedom of speech. And to a great many people, the ADL has gone full overboard in pursuit of their stated objective and have gone from protecting against discrimination to outright censorship and outright infringing on the freedom of speech. In fact, if the ADL hasn't been working with YouTube, it has at the very least been putting pressure on YouTube to cause YouTube to remove from the platform what the ADL feels to be hate and extremist content. And in fact, in early September, YouTube removed over 100,000 videos and took down over 17,000 channels on the basis that they violated the terms of use as relates to hate speech. And this is how we get into part two of the controversy and the ensuing conspiracy theories that PewDiePie is now supporting an entity that has been killing the very platform that made PewDiePie the success that he is. <sighs> PewDiePie fans are shocked, outraged, confused, bewildered, whatever adjective you want, at the fact that PewDiePie would pledge to donate $50,000 to an organization that has harmed the very community that has made PewDiePie the success that he is. And one of the theories that's making its way around the internet is that somehow the ADL is blackmailing PewDiePie. And when I hear the term blackmailing, my vlogging senses start tingling. Blackmail has a specific connotation, but it is often confounded with use of the criminal offense of extortion, but for good reason, and we're gonna get into it because that's the purpose of this vlog. This vlog is not just 
just about YouTube gossip. This vlog is about learning about the law and how it applies to everyday occurrences when we don't even think about it. Now blackmail is often included in the crime of extortion, but blackmail and extortion are two very different things. Blackmail is someone demanding something, money, favors, I don't know, material goods, something. It is someone demanding something under threat of revealing detrimental information. For example, if the ADL were in fact blackmailing PewDiePie, it would mean that they I don't know, say have a picture of PewDiePie in a compromising position. They have video of PewDiePie doing something very bad. And they are demanding that PewDiePie make a $50,000 donation, otherwise they are going to release this information to the detriment of PewDiePie. That is blackmail. Extortion, on the other hand, is someone demanding something, money, goods, favors, whatever, through coercion. And the coercion can consist of a threat of violence, a threat of force, or criminal use of authority. I love that one. Criminal use of authority. And the perfect examples illustrating both would be what you typically associate with the mob, you better do this or we're gonna smash your windows type thing, versus the criminal extortion that Michael Avenatti is accused of having done against Nike. Oh Nike, you'd better pay me $20 million or I'm going to release to the public evidence of your wrongdoing. I'm going to disclose detrimental information on the eve of your annual earnings, so as to harm your company unless you pay me $20 million. And that is in fact the basis of the extortion charges against Michael Avenatti as relates to Nike. I did a few videos on that, I'll post the playlist right here. And there you have it, the distinction between extortion and blackmail in law. Now, in fact, in law, blackmail is often included in the crime of extortion. Federally in Canada and in the United States, blackmail is included in the crime of extortion under federal law. That said, certain states make a distinction between blackmail as a crime and extortion as a crime. In certain states, the crime of blackmail is a separate and distinct crime from the crime of extortion. And in those states, blackmail is treated as a crime against the person, where extortion is treated as a crime of theft. But if we're being honest, as I always am, I am just using this PewDiePie oopsie as an excuse to delve into the distinction between blackmail and extortion. As relates to the controversy itself, it's a very interesting thing and it raises a lot of questions in my mind. Whether or not it is blackmail, extortion, whatever, whether or not there are nefarious reasons for which PewDiePie is making this donation, there could just as easily be strategic reasons for why he would make such a donation. PewDiePie has a history of having done and said some pretty offensive things in the past. One of those things involved using the service Fiverr to pay some people in India to hold up a sign saying something anti-Semitic. I don't need to say it because I don't need my channel going down. And while the joke was crude and offensive and arguably exploitive of people in other countries who may be compelled to do things that are immoral for five dollars, PewDiePie apologized for it, took the video down, said it was a mistake of judgment, etc, etc, but PewDiePie has had his own history of accusations of anti-Semitism and right-wing extremism. And so some might say that this is a strategic donation to make those allegations more difficult to make in the future. You can't call me an anti-Semite or right-wing extremist, I donated $50,000 to the ADL. Others might see it as some form of an attempt to bridge an ideological divide. Look at this, PewDiePie who has been accused of all sorts of right-wing extremism donating to the ADL, look at this, we can all hold hands and say, Kumbaya. Other more Machiavellian types might say that this is actually an act of aggression on behalf of PewDiePie, thumbing his nose at the ADL. Look, pff, this is how much I'm worth. Here's $50,000. Leave me alone. Incidentally, it's worth noting that the annual revenue of the ADL as of 2016 was upwards of $70 million. So $50,000. Hey Siri, what is 50,000 divided by 70 million? 50,000 divided by 70 million is about 0 0.0007142. So that is less than one tenth of one percent of the annual revenue of the ADL. It is a drop in the bucket and a drop in the bucket that no one is going to notice on either end. PewDiePie is not going to notice $50,000 coming out of his bank account and the ADL is not going to notice $50,000 going into their bank account. And to borrow a very logical explanation offered by Tim Pool, this may have also been a condition of the brand that PewDiePie was pitching in that episode that the brand says, look, I don't want to advertise on your channel unless you do something overt like donate $50,000 to the ADL as well. In which case, taking $50,000 out of a million dollar paid post, hmm, it might be a worthy compromise to make in order to get that sponsored post. All right, and these are the types of discussions that can ultimately never really be proven nor disproven. People are going to believe what they want to believe. They're going to look for the evidence to support that belief, and it's going to depend on the framework through which they view the world. All that to say is, at the very least, now you know the difference between black and extortion. If you like my content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share my video with someone who will listen. If you want some merch, check out for the links up and down. There's a PayPal donation thingy somewhere up there on the banner of my channel. I've been noticing that all of my videos have been getting systematically demonetized, which I don't know what that means because my content is not worthy of demonetization, but whatever, that's YouTube. So if you want to support my channel through alternative means, that's how to do it. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Boom! <laughs>